here on the table I have here a Soundstream X3 series. This one is the big brother to the X360. This one is the huge one. When I say big and heavy, this amp is big and real heavy. So you better make sure you mount this thing really good. If you're going to have the insane, I don't know, just sheer nuttiness to strap two of these monsters together to power up your voice coils on your subwoofers, man. Whoa, I can't even imagine what kind of stuff you got to be pulling into your vehicle. But this thing is really amazing. It's, it's just scary to look at this thing. This thing is, is nasty looking. This one here is a 6500 watt amplifier. And of course that's at a three, three second burst. It's nothing can hold 6500 watts in one little box like, like this monster can. But this thing comes close. This monster here, um, unlike the, the X360, which is the 4000 watt step down piece, this is the big brother. This one here, 6500 watts in a three second burst. One ohm stable, 4650 ohm um, watts at 1% total harmonic distortion, 1% THD. 4780 at 5% and 5180 at 10%. But we're talking subwoofers, we're talking subsonic, we're talking about pain making, pain creating amplifiers. So THD is what it's all about. This is all harmonic distortion. And I'm going to show you on the side what this monster is all about, how it's built, what you can expect if you're going to go out and purchase one of these amazing amplifiers. So let's get close and take a so look. So here's at a close up on the left side of your amplifier. Of course, you got your line in inputs, which are all machine thread, platinum. Um, connections you can see that the quality that they're putting into this stuff. This is all rock-solid stuff. Of course your level control um, Straightforward subsonic you got 15 Hertz on the low end 40 Hertz subsonic So again if you have your box tuned say it, you know 35 Hertz you want to cut this down Typically a rule of thumb is 5 to 10 percent lower So you might want to bring this down 3 to 5 Hertz underneath that to accentuate that and get the absolute must most bang for your buck on your sub box tuning Bass boost, it starts at zero flat up to 18 decibels of boost. The remote, which is for this, of course, for your wired gain control. Over here, low pass filter goes at 50 to 150 hertz, so you got a good, good bandwidth of range there to deal with. Phase shift, same kind of deal as on the other side, zero to 180. This here is for the bridge mode, so if you're going to take not one, but two of these amazing I can't even get over this. This amp is so crazy. If you if you were nuts enough to actually go out and buy two of these things and use them together into bridge mode, there's your slave master switch. There's your little cable to that link the two together, and of course here's diagnostic um, LEDs for your power clipping and protection. So let's just go jump onto the other side, and we'll wrap this video up. Okay, here we are at the right side of the amplifier. Now over here, you'll notice that it says minimum requirements true four gauge to operate. Okay. These are zero gauge. I think it would be a tight fit in my opinion, but I guess, you know, if you're using good multi-stranded quality cable, that might actually be a reality. But you have not one zero gauge input like you most might see on most amplifiers. Now again, understand this is a com competition amplifiers. These amplifiers go by their own set of rules. There's two inputs. So if you double four, you'd actually have a zero. Remote gate, the remote wire on this thing is almost as big as a main power input on most other amplifiers, believe it or not. So Get a terminal, pop it in there so that way it doesn't fall out when this thing's running. Same thing applies to your ground, of course, whatever the equivalent on your power side should always be on the bottom on the ground because you have a circuit. One is no good without the other. So there's your two grounds, two powers, remote, single mono output for your speaker level output. These look to be darn near four gauge. I'm gonna, uh, maybe it's not, maybe it's a four, it's an eight, I don't know. To me, it, I can't find it on the book actually either. But for my eyeball, it looks like an, a good oversized 8 gauge. You might actually get a uh, almost, some, almost a 4 gauge. Not quite, but it's close. But who the hell needs this thing anyway? It's ridiculous. Whatever this hole is big enough, it's big enough for you. Trust me. This amplifier, all in all, is just an awe-inspiring. I mean, you can probably hear it in my voice. This thing is just an amazing piece of massive, nasty, manly equipment. I just love it. So if you're looking for a good competition amplifier... Give it a look. Go to Soundstream site. These things are awesome. There's two models. There's the X360, and this one, which you're looking at, is the X3.7i.